I want to start off by giving all, always honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kodash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son. All right? Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Stone who taught me this truth, and whom the Lord has foreordained to be examples of perseverance, of faith, you know, for, for us, you know, men to walk after, you know, through the spirit of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Right? Citations also to the Akim out there who are sincerely pushing for that penny a day, you know, watching these prophecies and, you know, hoping to be part of the, um, the one for the four thousand and them that are delivered, you know, blessings and peace also to the men, women and children, you know, whom the Heavenly Father has foreordained to be a part of that large multitude, you know, that remnant who are covered, you know, by Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. This lesson, you know, as you see on screen, is going to be about talking too much. You know, and it was inspired by this YouTube short that I saw yesterday, you know, and you know, immediately the Spirit said, you know, this is a, it's a good video, you know, to do a lesson off of, you know, because this is a topic that we, we've, you know, we've touched on many times in this truth, you know, from the apostles and elders on down, you know, to very young men, we've touched on this, um, this topic, you know, and it's especially, um, you know, relevant, you know, to younger men, but, you know, right throughout, you know, your, um, the experience level, you know, in the camps from the, the very newest member all the way up, you know, to the apostles, you know, this is something that we ought to be mindful of, you know, because the, the, the speaking too much, you're going to inevitably say something stupid, you know. So we're just going to get into the lesson, get into the video, get into the lesson without further ado, you know, hopefully this is, um, this is edifying. By talking too much in a meeting or in any kind of situation, you make people inadvertently smell weakness on you. A lot of communication between humans is nonverbal. We feel we sense something from you and it communicates and we have an impression. And people who talk a lot generally give an impression of they don't know how to control themselves. Whereas people who kind of say a little bit less who kind of speak in riddles almost, who say, yeah, yeah, that's great, I'll think about it, or whatever, gives off an impression of power, as if they know more than they actually do. Mm -hmm. Because the game of power, a lot of it has to do with appearances. So I studied, you know, if, for writing the book, some of the most powerful people in history, kings and CEOs and presidents, and inevitably they had that quality, or they knew how to control their tongue. The other thing is, if you talk too much, you're going to inevitably say something stupid. Right. All right. All right, so... As you can see, you know, the video is on point, you know, by talking too much, first of all, you appear weak, right? You appear stupid, but when you talk less, you appear more powerful, you appear wiser, right? And also by speaking too much, you will inevitably say something stupid. You will inevitably fall by your tongue. So let's get into the precepts, you know, and see what the scriptures say about this, right? So we're going to start here in James chapter 3, verse 1. And if you see here, the title of this section is, The tongue is a fire. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing we shall receive the greater condemnation. This pretty much means, you know, matter of fact, let me just, let me just get it in, a, um, in another version, you know, so brothers can see what it means. All right? NIV says, Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we, we who teach will be judged more strictly. All right? So he that know it, to do something and doeth it not, you know, to him it is sin. And he that knoweth the Father's will and doeth it not will be beaten with more stripes than him that didn't know the Father's will and did it not. All right, so we who are in the truth, we who are teachers, you know, from the, um, the newest members all the way up to the apostles, we will be held, you know, um, to greater account, right? The more power you are given, the more responsibility is expected of you, right? So moving on to verse 2, it says, For in many things we offend all. If any man offend, offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and is able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed or wherever the governor wants to go. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. 
For every be kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. You know, so James is letting you know that it's a very difficult thing, right, to control the tongue. And the man who does so, right, as it says in verse 2, the man who does not offend in word, meaning the one that can, is able to bridle his, his tongue or keep his tongue is a perfect man because if you're able to rule that little member you're able to rule the entire body because it's it's the most unruly member of the body right let's get on our precept here All right this is um ecclesiasticus I believe it's chapter 28 right and we're reading from verse 18 many have fallen by the edge of the sword but not so many as have fallen by the tongue Right? Meaning more men have fallen by the tongue that have fallen by weapons. Right? Well is he that is defended from it and hath not passed through the venom thereof. Who hath not drawn the yoke thereof nor has been bound in her bands. For the yoke thereof is a yoke of iron and the bands thereof are bands of breath, brass. Salakia. The death thereof is an evil death. The grave were better than it. It shall not have rule over them that fear the Heavenly Father. So if you fear the Heavenly Father and you keep His commandments and precepts, you will learn to have rule over your tongue. You will learn to have rule over your spirit because the spirit of the Heavenly Father would be in you and that spirit would help you to overcome the flesh right, and to overcome the tongue. So the more you grow in this truth is the less you say, the less you speak, especially when you're not you know, um, you know, uh, um, among the brothers and you are without you know, in the world. You know, you're able to choose your words more carefully, right? It says, neither shall they be burnt with the flame thereof. Such as forsake the Lord shall fall into it, and it shall burn in them and not be quenched. It shall be sent upon them as a lion and devour them as a leopard. An example is um, the chief priest um, Ephraim, chief Ephraim. He fell by his tongue, you know, speaking about um, the MOTB um, being, you know, pretty much... Um, conforming to the to the so-called white man system and keeping the law. That's why he says the MOTB is, and he fell by his word. He fell he fell by his tongue for that, right? Uh, Captain Tazariak also recently fell by his tongue by 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 breaking down the name of the Most High incorrectly, saying that the name of the Most High just means the Lord or the Most High, right? They have forsaken the Heavenly Father. They have forsaken the right way. They're not teaching a hundred percent truth, and because of that, they're falling by the tongue. Right, talking too much, talk, you know, going on these stupid debates that that have no uh, um, edification in them, have no benefit, you know, to the body. Right, it says, "Look that thou hedge thy possession about with thorns and bind up thy silver and gold, and weigh thy words in a balance." Meaning, think before you speak, weigh the, weigh your words, right, and make a door and a bar for thy mouth. But will lest thou slide by it, slide not by it lest thou fall before him that lieth in wait. Right? Ecclesiastes 22, verse 27. Who shall set a watch before my mouth and a seal of wisdom upon my lips that I fall not suddenly by them that my tongue destroy me not? That seal of wisdom will be given by Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Right? Baharaka Kwadash. That's that seal of wisdom, the Holy Spirit, right? Which will be set upon your lips. So you filter the things that you say through the Holy Spirit and through the scriptures because the scriptures teach you how to conduct yourselves. It teach you the things that you are to say and the things that you are not to say. How to address situations. For example, you know, grievous words, tear of anger, but a soft answer, um, turn it away, wrath. You know, different situations like that. The scriptures teach you, you know, how to get out of situations with your tongue by speaking the right words and not speaking at all in some instances, right? So moving on, next precept. This is on Proverbs 17, verse 28. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. And that's what, you know, the, um, the, 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 the man was saying in the video. That if you don't speak, you seem wiser than you actually are. All right? Let's get it in the NIV. He said, even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongue. If you don't, spill out everything that's in your mind nobody can know what's in it 
if you speak in a more enigmatic way or in a more uh, uh, you speak in parables or riddles or you speak in a more um dark manner where you don't reveal everything that's in your mind people will automatically assume that you know more than you're saying right and that will give off an air of masculinity of power you know of wisdom of control and and then you would what you would get more respect but the more you speak the more you, you, you pour out your spirit before somebody, the, the less powerful you seem, the more feminine you seem, right? And ultimately, you're going to what? You're going to slip by the tongue, right? That's what is going to happen eventually, you know? Proverbs 29 verse 20, Seeth thou a man that is hasty in his words, there is more hope of a fool than him, right? And we're going to wrap here. There's many other scriptures that speak about, you know, speaking too much. But again, you know, with the, matter of fact, there's another one I wanted to get after this. And, and then we're going to wrap there. It says, to slip upon a pavement is Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 20 verse 18. To slip upon a pavement is better than to slip with the tongue. So the fall of the wicked shall come speedily. Now there are priests that I want to get. Um, it says, we'll let that speech be short. You know, this is, uh, it's, it's Ecclesiastes. few words this comprehending much in few words that's the one here we go this is ecclesiasticus 32 right i'll read you know from verse um from verse 8 it says let thy speech be short comprehending much in few words be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue if thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. You know, so this is an advice, especially to younger men, but it goes right across the board. You know, let your speech be short. You have something to say, get to the point. Don't, don't dally around it, you know, lengthening out the story. Because you end up saying, either making something up, you know, saying, um, you know, saying something that's not true. Or you say something that's stupid and you make yourself look stupid. Just get to the point. You know, be succinct. That's the word. Be succinct. Let your speech be short, comprehending much in few words. Be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. Sometimes you, you can know something and you just don't say it. Right? He says, um, the prudent man concealeth wisdom. And sometimes you can know something and they are, the, the, the thing that you know is right, is wise. But because you don't discern the right time to say it, right? It's rejected. You know, scriptures say uh, um, wisdom will be rejected if it come in order of a fool's mouth because he will not regard uh, um, time. Right? I think I think that's 20. Right? Ecclesiastes 20. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Here it goes. Verse 6. It says, Someone holdeth his tongue because he has not... Uh, matter of fact, read from verse 5. There is one that keepeth silent and is found wise, and another by much babbling becometh hateful. So some man holdeth his tongue because he has not to answer, and some keep it silence, knowing his time. A wild, a wise man will hold his tongue till he see opportunity, but a babbler and a fool will regard no time. He that uses many words shall be abhorred, right? And he that taketh to himself authority therein shall be hated. So you have to know when to speak, you know? And we're not to speak. So hopefully this lesson was edifying, you know, through the spirit till next time. Shalom.